Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this episode, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from Patreon.com. You can join and receive mail from my desk or from my Disneyland trips. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Joe Gamble, Scott Booker, Monica Seats Vega, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Scott Cagle, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons serious inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Grace Coat, Brian Crawford, Ben and Noel Bruning, Patty Wolin, Angela Reynolds, and Aaron Moran. B ticket patrons Jeff and Paige Orton and Joshua and Exorable Tosh Bell. And the A ticket patrons Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, the Disney Rewind Podcast, Angel Nablock, and the All Aboard Podcast. You can also sign up for my new newsletter for a chance to get some postcards delivered by the USPS to your mailbox. I am your host, your post host, Clocky. And today, we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has a submarine Triton heading out for an underwater adventure. In the background, you can see monorail red at the Tomorrowland station. On the back it reads, Submarine Ride. In Tomorrowland, you'll explore the mysteries of the seven seas aboard authentic submarines, viewing the lost continent of Atlantis, the Mermaid Lagoon, and traveling beneath a polar ice cap. It's postmarked January 2nd, 1964, with an Anaheim Fight TB Support Your TB Association cancel and a four cent Lincoln postage stamp, Scott number 1036. I assume they visited the park on Wednesday, January 1st, 1964, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weather was a high of 81 and a low of 44. Park attendance that day was 12,641. It's addressed to Mrs. Florence Wolfe of Portland, Oregon. It reads, Dear Graham, we've been on the monorail at Disneyland. Love, Scott. As we come up on a new year, I thought it would be fun to look at Disneyland 60 years ago and 50 years ago to see what anniversaries we'll have to look forward to and some of the events that happened in 1964 and 1974. Looking back 60 years ago to 1964, it was a large year for Disney Entertainment outside of the park, 1964 being the year the New York World's Fair opened. Great moments with Mr. Lincoln, It's a Small World, the Carousel of Progress, and the Magic Skyway all started in New York and eventually made their way west. The Carousel of Progress was only on the west coast for six years and reopened in the east coast a few years after the Magic Kingdom opened in Florida and has been there ever since. One expansion to the park, or an expansion to an attraction, was the Below Decks Museum on the sailing ship Columbia. Looking at some photos of the Columbia on Dave Land Web, you can see there was a rowboat where the current entrance of the lower decks of the Columbia are today. The museum is currently still there, and showcases the different crew quarters and living situations one might experience as a member of the crew. 1964 was also the last year Disneyland hosted the Western Regional Pancake Race. For more about the pancake races, listen to episode 167, Sent with Pancakes and Corn. The Jungle Cruise also had an expansion in 1964. This expansion was mentioned on episode 27, Sent from the Elephant Bathing Pool. Mark Davis added some of the funnier scenes, including expanding the African Belt and the Lost Safari. Finally, there was one name change in 1964. The Astro Jets became the Tomorrowland Jets. Great news, Enfield Post is back up on Etsy. Grabbing some vintage stamps is a great way to plus your mail. Whether you're trying to match the color of your postcard or envelope, or adding a theme stamp to the back of your mail, be sure to check out Enfield Post. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D-P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has the Main Street Railroad Station. You can see the Ernest S. Marsh bringing in passengers from a Grand Circle trip around Disneyland. On the upper right, it reads, Greetings from Disneyland. 
On the back it reads, Entering Disneyland, guests are greeted by a floral Mickey Mouse and the Santa Fe and Disneyland Depot, where a scaled-down model of a passenger train of another era puffs out of the station to take them on a scenic tour of Disneyland. It's postmarked January 3rd, 1974, with a United States Postal Service cancel and an 8-cent Eisenhower postage stamp, Scott number 1395. I assume they visit the park on Thursday, January 3rd, 1974, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weather was a high of 56 and a low of 38, with 0 .0 inches of precipitation. It's addressed to Mr. and Mrs. John R. Esch and family of Broomall, Pennsylvania. It reads, Having a great time with Jean, Kathy, and Bob Benson. Came here last night, going to Jack and Phyllis Livingston, Sunday. Toured Universal Studios today, Disneyland tomorrow. Love, Ruth, and boys. Fifty years ago was 1974. One of the main additions of the park in 1974 was the America Sings attraction. My summer 1974 Disneyland map even has the eagle and owl characters from the attraction on the cover. And my particular map had opening June 29, hand-stamped on the cover. The attraction did open that day, although it closed after an incident on July 8, 1974, when a cast member, Deborah Gale Stone, lost her life at the age of 18 while operating the attraction. As a result of her death, the attraction was closed for three days, while Imagineers added additional warning lights and other safety measures. There are many special days and weekends during 1974, including Herbie Day at Disneyland. This event was held on June 30th and was recorded then aired on The Wonderful World of Disney on July 11th to promote the new movie, Herbie Rides Again. To learn more about this event, check out episode 80, Sent with Ike Postage. This event was in addition to the Love Bug Days held May 11th and 12th in 1974. As I mentioned in a recent episode, 222, sent via the Santa Fe, the Santa Fe sponsorship was not renewed, and the attraction has just been called the Disneyland Railroad ever since. Another special, which was filmed in the park, was Sandy in Disneyland. The special featured Sandy Duncan and many other special guests. I've seen parts of it before, but we'll save a summary of it for a future episode in 2024. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learned about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has the poster for Pirates of the Caribbean from Walt Disney World, ready to be colored in. It's postmarked December 15th, 2023, with a Boston, Massachusetts Happy Holidays Snow Globe cancel and a Snowman in a Snow Globe forever postage stamp, Scott number 5816. It reads, 12-15-23. Thank you so much for the wonderful Disney Christmas card. I love it. Nikki. Mailed by Miss Nick. There's also a strip of washi tape at the bottom that looks like stamps for Neverland, Agrabah, Arendelle, and Pride Rock. Thank you so much for the postcard, Nikki. It was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun to send out 175-ish holiday cards this year. Although I am concerned that 10 or so that I sent from Knott's Berry Farm have not yet arrived. I love the odd loop washi tape you used at the bottom of the card. I've always enjoyed their designs, but have not gotten around to ordering from their Etsy shop. I just went to see what was available and they're currently taking a short break. These stamps would be a great addition to any piece of magic mail. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would be helpful to share your favorite episode to a friend or on social media. There are over 200 to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sent from Disneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sent from Disneyland or on Twitter at sent from Disney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard address to sent from Disneyland PO box 44 hood, California 95639. 
This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guest of the Sent from Disneyland podcast.